good evening. I nearly said good morning, everybody, then. It's not morning, is it? It's evening, ready for our bedtime story. So um, we've been reading David Walliam's Demon Dentist. Tonight is part 10, and we've been doing two chapters every night. So tonight we're going to read chapters 19 and 20. All right. Last night... um. Alfie had all of his teeth taken out by the demon dentist, didn't he? By Miss Root. So um, we'll find out what happens tonight. <gasps> My goodness, how exciting. Here we go. Alfie was lost. He knew where he was, but he didn't know where he should go. Home? He didn't want Dad to see him like this. It would upset him too much. School? This could be a brutal enough place at the best of times. The boy with no teeth? That's what he would become forever. Having a brace or big front teeth that made you look like a bunny rabbit would be bad enough. Alfie realised that there was only one place to go. The bell at the top of the door of Raj's, Raj's newsagent rang as the boy entered the shop. It served to alert the shopkeeper that a customer was either coming or going. Also... It woke Raj up. He was a big, soft marshmallow of a man, and although he loved selling sweets, he loved eating them even more. After the rush of sugar following a mid-afternoon scoffing session, he would often fall asleep at the counter. Indeed, when Alfie entered this particular afternoon, Raj was snoring away with a gobstopper still in his mouth. A slick of the newsagent's spit was spreading over the newspapers. Raj woke up with a start, spat out his sweet and exclaimed, Oh, young Alfred, my favourite customer! His voice was as bright and colourful as the confectionery he sold. Alfie always looked forward to seeing Raj. The newsagent knew how poor he and his dad were, and being a kind-hearted man, he would often give Alfie a treat to take home. A melted ice lolly, a chocolate bar that had been slightly nibbled by a rodent, or a bag of jelly babies that Raj had accidentally sat on so all the tiny tots were now flattened. Raj wasn't a wealthy man and couldn't afford to give anything more, but to Alfie and his father they were like gifts sent from heaven, and the difference between going to bed hungry or not. Entering Raj's shop today, the boy couldn't even force a smile. You're very quiet this afternoon, young man, mused the shopkeeper. Squinting in his eyes, he took a better look at his favourite customer. In truth, Raj had a lot of favourite customers, but calling them all that made them feel special. There is something very different about you today, he said. Raj came out from behind his counter to give the boy a closer inspection. You've had a perm! No, 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 no. That thought was dismissed as soon as it had been thinked. Mm, you've had one of those far too orangey spray tans. No, 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 no. Raj lowered his head so he was staring the boy right in the face. Alfie opened his mouth to reveal the full extent of his toothlessness. The newsagent peered inside. I've got it, exclaimed Raj. I've got it. Alfie nodded his head in encouragement. It couldn't be more obvious now. You've had your teeth whitened. The boy rolled his eyes. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not it, is it? Alfie shook his head. You've had all your teeth removed. Raj then repeated what he'd just said a hundred times louder, double-checking if it re could really be true. You've had all your teeth removed! The man was so flabbergasted, he needed to sit down and he sank onto a large box of crisps. Unfortunately, he was far too heavy for it, and within seconds his weight had flattened the box completely, and he was lying on the floor. The bags of crisps had all exploded, and tiny flakes of crisps now showered the shop. Oh dear, said Raj as he tried to heave his generously proportioned bum off the ground. Remind me to knock a penny off the price of these crisps, won't you? He added as he fumbled to his feet. But why, boy, why? Why have you had all your teeth removed? Alfie had given up trying to talk for now and mimed the international sign language for pen and paper by pretending to write, The bill. No, no, no. Pen and paper, guessed Raj. Oh, I'm good at charades. The newsagent started rushing around his shop trying to find some pen and a pa pa some pe some paper and a pen. His shop was infamous in the town for being incredibly messy. It was never easy to find what he wanted, not even for the owner. I think there are some post-it notes in the freezer cabinet, just under the chalk ices. He slid open the glass roof and reached inside. I don't really remember why I put them in here. At least they won't have gone off. 
Next, Raj scurried over to the other side of his store. A pen! he exclaimed. I think I put one in the sherbet dip dap back a, a while back. I ate the licorice, so I popped a black felt tip pen in. Not as tasty as the licorice, mind you, but still an effective way of enjoying the sherbet no less. After a short while, Raj identified the correct dip dab and pulled out the pen. It was coated in the fizzy white powder. Sherbet, said Raj as he offered Alfie the pen. No. Alfie shook his head so Raj licked it clean before handing to it. Slight taste of ink, he mused. Otherwise, fine, fine. So tell me, young sir, what on earth has happened? A hundred frozen post-it notes later, Raj had been told the whole story. By this time, Alfie was crying hard. What had happened to him had finally sunk in. Raj gave the boy a much-needed hug. The newsagent was big and fat and squishy. He was good at hugs. You poor thing, said Raj, as Alfie's tears soaked through the man's bright orange shirt. I am so angry with that Miss Root. First she goes into the local schools and gives out free sweets, taking away all my customers. And now this. Oh, poor Alfie couldn't stop crying. Raj patted him gently and the boy sniffed. You can blow your nose on that there Hello magazine over there. Now, wait there, I've got an idea. Well, said Raj, how do they fit? Raj had gone upstairs to his flat above the shop and brought down his late wife's false teeth in a glass of water for the boy to try for size. They looked a little bit like those joke shop gnashers that you wind up and watch chatter across the table. To Alfie's surprise, though, they fitted rather well. They weren't perfect. The dentures had been specifically made for a middle-aged woman. They rubbed here and there, but they were infinitely better than having no teeth at all. Are you sure... Oh. Are you sure you don't mind me borrowing them? Asked Alfie, delighted to discover that he could at last talk again. No, 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 no. It's what dear Mrs. Raj would have wanted, mate. Thank you so much. Might you have any use for a glass eye, rubber hand, or either of her wooden legs as well? Said Raj. Alfie was quite taken aback. After all, he'd never met the late Mrs. Raj. Not that there seemed to be much of her to meet. Very kind of you, Raj, but no thank you. Not kind at all, just part of the service. That's why people should always support the smaller local shops. You wouldn't get that from a supermarket, I can tell you. True, said Alfie, though he wasn't sure many customers at a supermarket would need a loan of some second-hand false teeth. Though I would advise you not to go anywhere near Toffee's for a while, said the newsagent. I remember these dentures came clean out of my late wife's mouth when she bit into an out-of-date toffo I gave her on our silver wedding anniversary. Noted, Raj, I will remember that, said Alfie. So, how can we stop Root? My teeth were bad, but not that bad. There was no way on earth she needed to take out all of my teeth. She's evil. Now I come to think of it, said the newsagent, there have been some strange goings on in this town ever since she arrived, you know. Like children putting teeth under their pillow and finding something nasty in the morning, do you mean? said Alfie. Exactly, exclaimed Raj. How did you know that? Because it happened to my girl, friend Gabs. Your girlfriend? Oh, said Raj. No, she isn't my girlfriend. A girl friend. A friend who's a girl. Your friend, girl. Alfie thought it was easy to simply agree. Yes, I suppose so. Gabs has drawn up a map chatting exactly where and, where and when the teeth were snatched. This whole thing is sickening. When I was little, or at least smaller than I am now, and I lost a tooth, I would put it under my pillow, and when I woke up, I'd find a coin in its place, from the tooth fairy. Well, your mum or dad must have left it there. Raj looked confused. They told me it was a tooth fairy. Alfie sighed. It was very nearly a teenager. To still believe in tooth fairies is just plain silly. As far as he was concerned, the thought that a tiny winged figure in a tutu and holding a wand came into your room at night to leave money under your pillow was preposterous. However, he didn't want to hurt the news agent's feelings. Well, I think sometimes it might be the tooth fairies. And when they're busy, mum and dad's help out. Gone, Rush. Well, quite a few of my younger customers woke up this morning to find not a coin, but all sorts of nasties under their pillow. Like what? said Alfie. Ah, there were cockroaches. Anything else? Oh, let me think. Dead worms, a live rat, a toad that had been flattened by a mallet and dried out in the sun till it was crispy. The boy brought his hand up to his mouth. He felt sick at the thought of all these horrors. Still, his ghoulish curiosity got the better of him and he wanted to hear more. 
Was that all? he inquired. No! Raj took a deep breath. Are you sure you want to know about the most gruesome one, boy? Mm. Yes and no, said Alfie, but mainly yes. Raj took a deep breath before telling him. It was ugh, an old man's toenail. No, said Alfie. Yes, nobody knows who it belonged to. It was all big and thick and dirty, it was, with all this dried pus around the edge. Stop, said Alfie. You said you wanted me to tell you, said Raj. Yeah, but I didn't know it was going to be that disgusting. Alfie thought for a moment. And none of these children saw anything. The news agent shook his head. Not a one. Nobody saw a thing. It's a mystery. And how can one person possibly get around to all of those children in one night? Alfie pulled himself up onto the shop's counter and sat there next to the till. But there must be some kind of connection with Miss, Miss Root. There must be. I swear she's evil, he said. We need to catch her red-handed. Lay some sort of trap. Alfie fell silent and stared into space. Raj looked at him. A trap, said the newsagent. I'm thinking, Raj. Oh, my apologies. Raj mooched around awkwardly for a few moments. Would a mint help to focus your mind? <gasps> I've got it, said Alfie. His eyes were shining and he leapt off the counter in excitement. Got what? A plan. How we can catch the tooth snatcher. Great, my boy. Brilliant. How can I help you? Alfie looked right into Raj's eyes for a moment. He knew what he was about to say was not going to go down well at all. It's just a very small thing. Yes, said the news agent, coming even closer. I need to borrow one of your teeth. <gasps> I wonder what's going to happen. Oh my goodness, they're getting closer and closer. I really hope they catch Miss Root and they get rid of her from their town so they can have a good dentist there again. Ugh, I don't know. So tomorrow night, even though it's the holidays, we'll still do the story every night till we get to the end. And then we'll have another story. All right. Okay. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.